Yes, welcome along to episode 5 of Open the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch counting down to the 2022 Cheltenham Festival. A bit tired this morning, Gavin. Hi, Dave. I'm a bit tired. I was over in London yesterday. I had All to right. get to the airport for 5 o'clock to get an antigen test. Oh, dear. It came back negative, right? Oh, God. That was the only bit of good news I had on the day. <laughs> Went over, was at the HWPA Awards in the Royal Lancaster in London. Very was massive. it worth it? Was it what? Didn't win either award. Reporter of the year, no. Writer of the year, no. And congratulations to my colleagues, Chris Cook and Lee Watershed as well. Yeah, well, at least uh, you were in the top four for both, so that's an achievement. The, uh, top, uh, top four yeah, for me. I might as well have finished last, Gavin. Yeah, but it's, it's not the win, it's the taking part. Like, if I back a horse at six or seven to four and he gets beat a short head, sure, it's grand. Be a hero. <laughs> not. Not. Yeah, no, no. My, my heartiest congratulations to Lee Watershed, your 2021 Writer of the Year, and Chris Cook, Reporter of the Year. How are you? Yeah, good, yeah. We had a brilliant weekend's racing. Uh, Saturday was really good and sa- Sunday was even better. Uh, there was just race after race. Brilliant stuff on Sunday. So the national hunt season is kicking off big so time. There's plenty to talk about. Loads. You know what that means? We have to get on with the show. So we're going to kick off with our questions from the crowd. And question one this week comes in from Jeremy Collins. And Jeremy is saying, Gavin, the Betri 6.5 are still offering 8-1 to one about Green team in the Queen Mother Champion Chase after what he did in the Tinkle Creek, should he not be disputing favouritism? Uh, I don't think so. I think 8-1 is about the right price. He wouldn't necessarily be for me. As has happened with a lot of the National Hunt um, races this season, uh, some of them have fallen apart, and I thought that happened again uh, with the Tinkle Creek. Shaq and Persois finished with a small injury behind, I think, is mm. what they're saying. Yeah, it wasn't uh, right. Yeah, and um, Nubia Negra, sure, he must just only run well when he's fresh. So the two of them didn't show up. So he beats Hitman by five and a half lengths and another head to, to Captain Guinness. To me, that's not probably good enough to win a champion chase. On the plus side, he's only seven, so he does have time to improve. I checked there, and he's had eight wins. Six were right-handed, and one was at Fontwell. So I never know whether Fontwell is right hand or left-handed because it's a figure of eight. It's kind of both, yeah. It's kind of both. So uh, he seems to be a little bit better right-handed. He probably enjoys decent ground. If you look at the champion chase last year, put the kettle on first, Nubi Negra second, Shaq and Persua. Granite team was fourth, beating a couple of lengths. So Royal, who was very unlucky in the race, first flow in notebook. To me, that's... It wasn't a vintage renewal. Midland, yeah. Yeah. And you've also got this year Shishkin and Leonard Mean, so they have to be well ahead of him. Do you know what I think? I think with Green Athene, I think he's a he's a picker up of pieces. Mm. So over the years, Paul Nichols has probably won champion chases that he shouldn't have. Dodging bullets, pull it along. Mm. Were were very good horses, but they weren't superstars. But yeah. they they kind of they were there to tap it in. They were in the right place at the right time when others under, underperformed. So la- two years ago, obviously, with Politolog, that was the, the big race it was supposed to be. And, and even Deffy Desai, who was the one that showed up between Alti or Shaq and Persuan and Deffy, yeah. we we're all looking forward to. Deffy obviously ran a shocker and Politolog was there to pick up the pieces. I think Green Atene is going to be something similar. I think if we don't get Shishkin, Energamine and Shaq and Persuan at their best, mm. and we only see maybe one of them, and then that doesn't perform on the day. Ah, that can happen, He's the yeah. one that's going to pick up the piece, I think. Look, there's lots of fancied horses in every race for Cheltenham this year. They're not all going to show up in tip-top form on no. the day, so if they don't, as you said, we haven't seen Shishkin yet this season. Energamin missed the arc last year with a late injury, so you never know what's going to happen, but I'd have him definitely third favourite. So 8-1. to one. Right price. Right price? Yeah. I think, yeah, 8-1. to one. I wouldn't have him any shorter anyway. No. There you go. That's our thoughts on Green Athene. Our next question comes in from John Hill, and John says that there was a big shake-up, and there was a massive shake-up in the anti-post markets for the Novice Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival. But who impressed us most, Gavin? Lossy Mouth, okay. Ginto, yeah. Constitution Hill, or Dysart Dynamo? There's only one answer now, Gavin, and please get the answer right. There's only <laughs> one answer to this now, question First now. of all, well done, which your uh, charity bet, Lossy Mouth. Thank you. Uh, brilliant. Uh, That's the only thing that went right for me last week. <laughs> well, well done. 7 to 1, 1 by 14 lengths. Uh, for me, definitely, of those four that you mentioned so far, it's Constitution Hill. Good answer, Gavin. Uh, was quick on the clock, which I'll talk about in the week that was. It's now uh, 4 to 1 for the Supreme Novices Hurdle. Uh, John Bond, I think, is 3 to 1. Like It's it's amazing that Nicky is those two so short already. It's incredible. But he was very, very good. He'd only ran the point to point. He bolted up the other day. Beat your horse, might I. Uh, Jinto was very good in Navin. Uh, Dice Artinamo was... Excellent in Cork. Excellent, yeah. Two other horses to mention that should be in the same category as these four is Largy Debu, who actually was a, a second quicker than Dysart Dynamo. He mm-hmm. was very good. Uh, and also, what do you want? Who beat Ginto or Ginto in a bumper at Fairy House. That's right. He stayed on very strongly the other day. Uh, the exact same time as Ginto, so he could be a Bartlett horse. So I'd mentioned those six, but of the six, Constitution Hill was the most impressive. So I have to bite my tongue here, right? Because yeah. uh, I went home one of the days last week and I was chatting to my dad and I said, do you watch Open the Ante? 
He said, I did. He said, you're getting, you're, you're getting carried away. He said, you're getting too excited and you need to calm down. <laughs> so talking about Constitution Hill, I'm going to be calm. mellow. Yeah, I'm going to be calm. But he was very impressive visually, isn't he? And yeah, on the clock. I think he's a machine. Do you? <laughs> oh, I think it's a machine. Sorry, Dad. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I have to say, for what he did, like, I thought Mai Tai was a very good horse. I put him up for the Ballymore. Mai Tai would have won that race by 17 lengths. And he would have looked impressive. Yeah. Against Outlaw Peter, who had decent form in Ireland as well. And I just think with Constitution Hill, when you read the comments afterwards, and Nicky saying he was fatter than him, that he just lounges in a stable. He said he's the most remarkable horse. But he said, like in his work, when they just p- pulled him out, and said, go, he's gone. He's got yeah. that instant turn of foot. He's very good. Yeah, they all can't win the Supreme, but... Uh, no, Constitution Hill can, though. <laughs> yeah, no, he looked very good. We'll chat about him later on as well. I have a couple okay. of times to talk to you about. But of those four for John, Constitution Hill impressed you most? Yep. And he certainly impressed me most, John. Our third question this week comes in from Kelly McManus, and Kelly wants to know what you're all thinking. What on earth has happened to Envoy Allen? Was he ever that good, Gavin, or were we always overrating him? Uh, he was that good. Was he, Gavin? He was that good. Why yeah. was he that good? Well, he won five grade ones, uh, including the champion bumper. He um, he beat Blue Sari now in the champion bumper. Yeah, he won He won the Royal Bond against Abigail Evers over two miles. Give him a chance. Yes. He won the Lawlers in ace. Probably wasn't the strongest, but it was a good time. He won the Ballymore, and as I said uh, last year, it was the fastest Ballymore in 15 years compared to the same day as Carl Cup. Um, it was even faster than Faheen was or any of those. So okay, he was, okay. He, so devil's advocate here, okay? It was a brilliant performance. Okay, and he also that, won the Drinmore. Okay, it was a poor Drinmore maybe, but he, he won that well. Possibly the worst Drinmore living memory, yeah, okay. apart from him. Uh, so the big breakaway and the big getaway were in the Ballymore, yeah? No, it was uh, the second horse was the uh, The second easy, horse was easy was work. Easy work. Third right. horse was the big getaway. Oh yeah, sorry, and yeah. fourth horse was the big breakaway. Okay. So it's hardly a ringing endorsement, is it? No, but... At the time, so it suggests that it was a, it was a very good race. So yeah. there you go. So look, I agree with you. I'm only I'm only kind of just being devil's advocate. Yeah, I am. Yeah, but but it, it's just a shame. Like we fell in love with him, and we were, as you ah, say, yeah. you 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 christened him himself. Yeah, yeah. But it's just hard to watch the Envoy Allen last Sunday compared to the Envoy Allen of a few years ago. Yeah, no, I didn't fancy him last Sunday necessarily Did because you not? well, we were chatting about it last week and. I just think that he was 11 for 11 with Gordon. He changed stable. Henry is a brilliant trainer, just as good as Gordon. The two magic magic men is that, I don't know, he, he, he was very keen in Cheltenham. He picked up an injury at Punchestown last April. He doesn't seem to be the same horse. Has he a broken heart? Has he an injury? There's something. Well, you have a broken heart if he's watching this show, yeah. listening to you anyway. Um, so, yeah, he's just not the same horse he was. Is he going to get back to those dizzy heights? I don't think so, no. It, it, like the, there'll be people watching this now, and they will think, like in stocks and shares, now is the perfect time to start investing in Envoy Allen. Is it now no. the time? No. You get a price for Cheltenham. Could no, he win I, a King George if he runs in it? Could he win a, no, a Ryan Arch? Could no. he win a Gold Cup? No. That's a lot of no's. No, there, he, no. Won't, he won't run the King George. He could run the Ryan Air. He's 10 to 1. I wouldn't back him. His jumping was all over the place on Sunday. That's and that's funny. what really worries me. He's high, he's low, he's left, he's right. He's gone scatterbrained. And that was never him. So yeah. He's got a broken heart, so we should leave him alone. Poor Ellen boy, Ellen. He's got a broken heart, and he is no longer himself. And our final question, which is a great one. Okay. It's a very good one. comes in from Liam Callaghan. And Liam wants to know, Gavin, if he offered us both a blank check, yep. I'd love one. Now, I'd love <laughs> one myself. It would cheer me up after yesterday. Would you build a house? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Liam will come in very handy. If we were both offered a blank check to buy any horse in training, okay. who would it be? Now, I know yours. I know yours. You don't. I guarantee I'll get this right. But I'm going to. I'm going to say it this way. Uh, and don't pick four like you. No, 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 no. No, but I'm going to say um, if you've got a blank check, what race do you want to win? Oh, I'm a bit worried now that I don't. For me, know. for me. No, I, I can, I'm going to guess. Okay, Guang Guang. Can I guess? Yeah. Okay, my guess, and I, I would back this at evens right now. Go on. My guess would be American Mike. No. No, and that's I exactly. I'm actually, I'm actually delighted you said that because that's typical of the bra- the racing brain or whatever. That we're all into these young young horses. Like if I gave you, yeah, but you want I, to have as much years of pleasure as you can. Um, if I gave you a few horses who are brilliant, right? Bob Ollinger, appreciated John Bond, Fernie Hollow, Shishkin, Energamine, and obviously Honeysuckle, right? Uh, but for me, if I had a blank check to own any horse, I want to win the Gold Cup. Yeah, so it you is, better give the. It answer. is the biggest race of the season, um, so. I would pick a Plutard because he's seven. I would also consider Manella Indo, but he's eight. So because of Plutard is seven, this thing of always chasing and chasing the young horses, like recently there was three horses sold from the same point to point, and they all made over 300 grand, which to me seems crazy. So we're always on about younger horses and John Bonds and American Mikes and all these ones. Constitution Hill, you have to <laughs> <forget them> there. <laughs> but um, 
I would sooner own a Plutard who's seven and he's there. He's at the top table already. You don't have to worry is he going to get there. He's there. Yeah, but so the uh, counter argument to that was he was there last year and he wasn't good enough to win a Gold Cup. Yeah, I'm not saying he's a certainty, but if I had to pick him and Manella Indo, particularly to get some more prize money into the pocket, uh, he's seven, Manella Indo is eight. Um, so I'd go for a Plutard. Oh, it's got to be Bob. Bob, I'll It's got to be Bob, yeah. yeah. It's got to be Bob. He is, he is, he is the You don't know if he's going to stay at three mile two. At least you know what Plutard is. I'm just saying, to win a Gold Cup, I think your best chance right now to own any horse is a Plutard. Okay, so you're a Plutard. So Liam is writing a check for... Would you get him for a million? Mm, about that. Um, well, I'd sooner own him for a million. But well, the three, the three point pointers for 300 each. Well, yeah. I'll tell you now, right? If Liam is watching, right? And Liam is, is getting the pen ready to write these checks, right? He will have to pay a hell of a lot more for Bob than he will for, for Apple's Tar. Yeah. Some of those horses we mentioned. Bob could be double the price of. And, and a honeysuckle will be a fortune. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, Shishkin, Enner, Green. They'd all make more than Plutard. Now, I might end up tipping Manella into the Gold Cup. I don't know yet. <laughs> but I'm just saying, as because he's a year younger, I'd sooner own a Plutard. But if, 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 you mightn't be able to tip Manella Indo now because the BHA will have an investigation. Because if you own a Plutard, you can't tip up <laughs> Manella Indo, yeah? Okay. So, yeah. But you're going to buy a Plutard. Yeah. And I'll buy Bob Ollinger. You've got two new owners, Henry de Bromhead. So now, folks, it's time for the week that was. Yes, where Gavin Lynch gets a chance to tell you about all the horses who have impressed him over the last seven days. And just a word of warning, if you want to have a cup of coffee or, you know, put on your coffee machine or get a cup of tea or or maybe just set yourself up because he texted me this morning and he said, Dave, it's a long one this week. It's a long one. It could go on for a while. I have a lot of horses to talk about. He's made notes. He's got the stopwatch out. Yeah, He's you done stop a talking lot of and we'll get through it quicker. Oh yeah, go on. <laughs> but if you want a few Cheltenham pointers, there was a lot this week. Going to start in Leicester on Thursday with Nurse Susan. Did you see her win? I did. She's now two from two over hurdles. She made a mistake the second last, but she won very easy. Um, Dan Skelton has it. She's 14 home to the Mayor's Novice. There are so many candidates for the Mayor's Novice hurdle. It's unbelievable. There's already six good ones in it. So don't back backhand for the Mayor's Novice hurdle yet. Uh, Sandown on Friday, forever blessed. Uh, two over two over hurdles for Harry Fry. Didn't actually run in the flat. It's a three-year-old. Mm. Uh, it's 16 home for the Triumph Hurdle. There'll be lots more coming out for the Triumph Hurdle in the next few months. Horse that'll bolt up and you'll think that's going to win and that's going to win. So stay calm. Um, even though Phil Dorm might win it. I'm dying to ask uh, you a question. Just turn around your notes really quickly there for the camera. Really quickly. Wh wh why are some in orange and some in yellow? Because it's prices and it's where they ran and stuff. Okay. And the yellow's the, the name of the horse. So Lazzy Mouth on Friday. Uh, the horse that you tipped up, well done. 7-1. Uh, yeah, for the charity bet. Uh, lucky winner, just about won by 14 lengths. I'm clattered for the second last. <laughs> yeah. Bar that, it actually jumped well. It was off for a year and then was off for nine months. Mm -hmm. It won two handicaps off 117 and 123. Before the other day, I think it was off 136. It'll be a lot higher after that. Uh, very, very strong stayer, yeah. Relentless gallop. Yeah, relentless gallop. That's the expression I was trying to come up with, but didn't. 16 home with the Ballymore, as we said. So, on to Sandown on Saturday. Constitution Hill, uh, first run in race course. Had only ran second in a point to point. Uh, was getting three pound from Might High, but both up by 14 lengths. Got blocked in, coming to stage two out on the inside, switched out, and then after the last, loads of gears. Uh, I've got a few times, but I might just say them at the end of this piece, including him. Is that okay? How did he come out, though? Good? Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fast time. Uh, I think he was a couple of seconds quicker after the last. But you're comparing him to a horse rate 100 and a horse rate 130. Oh, anyway. He's deadly. Uh, he's 4 to 1 only for the Supreme. Yeah, he's deadly, though. Seems very short. Oh, he's deadly. Uh, Edward Stone is now 8 to 1 for the Arkle. Um, he Tipped beat... up on last week's show by both of us, I think. Um, I, wa I was sitting on the I fence. Did. I you did. You did. You did. You did. I didn't really. Uh, beat Warlord and third time lucky by 16 lengths. That's third time lucky. Ball burst game over for him, really. In third terms time of unlucky over fences. Yeah. He's just. Well, you, you hit the nail on the head last week. You said it. He's not doing it right. He's not doing it right. He's doing things, things right. in the wrong order. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, doing, wasting, yeah. he's wasting so much energy in the first half of the race instead of keeping it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's having a good front nine and a bad back yeah, nine or whatever. Yeah, like he's, you know, having a few quiet drinks in the pub and then when he gets to the nightclub, he's knackered. Yeah, and no, also. Uh, four chase starts for Edward Stone. Uh, it was unseated a year ago. It was an obvious last year and then they kept it for this season, which seems to be a good idea. Um, but now he's won his last two. He's 8-1 for the arc, as we said. One good thing about Edward Stone, I like how quick he is at the other side of a fence. He lands running every time. Mm. I think he's, he's, good. he's not good enough to win Arkham, but I don't think good. so, no. That's what I was going to say. Like, he was fifth in the county hurdle, beating three lengths off 148. He's come from a handicap. Generally, you need to be a grade one horse to be going and winning an arc. Now, the only thing I will say also about him is, I really fancy him to win the Greatwood last year that the Shunter won. 
and he travelled like a dream. He's grown up, he's manned up as a horse. Okay. So he used to be just bridal merchant. He's no longer bridal merchant. Yeah, I just don't see him winning an article though. No, me neither. But he, I could see him finish the second, third or fourth. Yeah, he could, yeah. Yeah. Um, Grenatine is now 8-1 to for the champion chase, we said, beat Hitman by five and a half lengths. The race fell apart a little bit. Uh, Shaq and Porcelana. Well, what? Like, jalar, like, gee, I, I don't even know the, what words I can say again. <laughs> for Shaq and Porcelana. I just, like, like, it was like, lovely, pings the first. Here we go, Patrick. Make all the way you go. Six to he, one for the champion chase. Happy days. He then. never jumped with the same fluency as he normally does. Like, you expected him when they got to the railway fences down the back straight that he was going to be clear, yeah. didn't you? And he wasn't. And the thing I couldn't understand was, there were, there were absolutely perfect strides to Patrick Aston for mm. out two of the railway fences. Perfect strides. Patrick's you know, brilliant over you, fences. You know when you're watching a jockey and, and you're following a horse yeah. and you're saying, right, that's the strike, go for it. And I was like, lovely, he's going to ping this. And then he you're going one, two, strike. three. And <laughs> yeah, and he was going one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> but um, maybe he doesn't travel. Like he, he was disappointed in the champion chase. He was disappointed again. So maybe it's going, to the, going on the boat. I don't know, but... Um, well, it was a catastrophic week for my uh, anti-post list. So it was, yeah. uh, on to Aintree and Saturday, where just to tell you the ground, if I use the word atrocious, nothing against Aintree, but the ground was very, very, very testing. Mm. Uh, the times were very slow, so just yeah. to allow for that. Zambella beat Annie Mack by four and three quarter lengths and ten lengths back to the odds on Ellie May. Uh, now, Gavin, you're a big Ellie May fan. Yeah. How are you going to defend her here? I think that, as was the case with some of Willie's, obviously Willie had a lot of winners over the weekend. I'd say she'll come on for the run. She got beat just about last year in her first run back. Uh, the ground was very testing, so to go there, maybe she should improve for fitness or experience, well, not experience, but just for her seasonal debut. I wouldn't give up on Ellie May, definitely not. Okay. I think she's the best of those Is three. She drifting out to a backward price now? Yeah, she's 8-1 to one for the Mayor's Chase, and Zambella, who won it, is 14s. But I'd still have Ellie May headed the other two. Ooh. But we have an insight into you. Are you going to tip her later on? No. Okay. Uh, C Sessions won uh, the three-year-old hurdle race beat Calvados and beat White Pepper who I backed and was very disappointing made a mistake two out but still would you take that run by White Pe Pepper with a pinch of salt good man well done no I stole that from Bruce Millington on the okay. podcast sorry okay. I okay. thought that was very good when I said <laughs> uh, just to say it probably did Phil Doar's uh, run in the north uh, gave it a compliment mm. because C Sessions was beaten 17 lengths by uh, Phil Doar who was giving it a stone so. delighted for Ross Sullivan possibly ah, the yeah. nicest man he in seems race. a lovely fella yeah, yeah. Uh, it was one, two, three, four for Irish horses too early to say that we have the better three-year-olds because there's not enough mixing between them yet, but just it was the first sign that maybe that's the case. Yep. Uh, Protectorat was very, very good. Uh, beat the 11-year-old native uh, river by 25 lengths. Yeah, I was chatting to somebody last week who didn't think he'd stay. Yeah. Was that you? Yeah. And just to tell you, the did horse... Did he what? The horse he ran this, into the middle of Liverpool, he did. The horse this time last week was 7-4. to four. He SP'd at 4-1 to one for a reason. That thousands of people didn't think he'd stay either. Or else thousands of people are reading your article in the Racing Post every Saturday. <laughs> I, yeah, well, he'd only ran once before over that kind of a trip and he was well beat. So you couldn't have said that he was definitely going to stay, but he stayed absolutely no problem. Uh, he beat Native River, as I said, by 25 lengths. It certainly made up for Dan Skelton's poor weekend with third time lucky, Nubi Negra and all mankind getting stuffed. But uh, he's 20 to 1 for the Gold Cup. He has to be a player. Just keep in mind, though. Really? That ah, he does, yeah. Like, he's. He was a very decent two and a half miler, and if he stays, so like it's between him and Chantry House at the minute to be the best English trained horse in the Gold Cup, probably. Imperial Aura pulled up, simply the bets pulled up, so the race fell apart a little bit. But you'd have to say he was very good. Just forget about Champ there? Or... No. no. Oh, you did it on purpose? Well, just, yeah. Uh, Tiger Old pulled up with a circuit to go, still 6 to 1 for the cross country chase. Gordon said afterwards he probably shouldn't have ran the horse because the ground was so testing. Now he pulled up, he ran on the flat last year in Nav and then he pulled up uh, on his next star, so I wouldn't give up on him at all. Absolutely not. Uh, Navin on Saturday, what do you want? Is 25 to 1 now for the Albert Bartlett. He beat Harold Hardrad by two and a quarter lengths. Um, he beat Ginto, as we said earlier, in a bumper before that in Fairy House uh, last spring. So he's a very, very good horse. He was third to kill Crow in the winner's bumper at Leperstown. Um, to me, he looks like an Albert Bartlett horse that he'd stay forever. Uh, Ginto uh, beat Eric Bloodaxe by uh, I think it was 11 lengths yeah, good performance that was too. that was a really he's good he's grown up yeah. Yeah. I backed Eric Bloodaxe and uh, he wasn't good enough no, no. excuse no. Um, Riviera de Tell was very good again I had a little question about her going left handed would she jump to the right now she did a she little did. bit she a little did, bit yeah. but a bit like a high senor nothing really to worry about yeah. she's just going in and she's just organising herself a little bit to the right so I wouldn't unbelievable achievement by Gordon to win 7 races on the one yeah. card Astonishing. Yeah, first time ever, isn't it? First time ever. Uh, she beat uh, Take All by 12 lengths in a very decent time of 4.20. Uh, 
Um, take all was 36 lengths behind her at Punchtown, but she still was very good. She mightn't go to Christmas because uh, Gordon said that Noel Moore and Valerie are away for Christmas and holidays, so um, she might appear maybe in the Irish Oracle at the end of January. Uh, Farouk Delaine won a beginner's chase. Uh, Good beginner's chase. Yeah, Beat Blue Sari who stayed on well. Uh, Farouk Delaine needs off ground. Might be a little bit better going right hand as it showed over hurdles. Uh, he's 14 to 1 for the Brown Advisory. On to Huntington on Sunday. Uh, Oscar Elite was a hot favourite to win, was very disappointing. Oh. Like anybody who backed it at Cheltenham, everybody who screamed that I was going to bolt up at Cheltenham because it fell at the third last year. It, it says now that he probably wouldn't have. And like he tried a very short run and looked over with four to jump. You know, yeah. Travelling all over them. Brinkley was never travelling really well at all no. and stayed on very well. That could be a horse maybe for the National Hunt Chase. Yep. Uh, first flow uh, beat Fun and Bold Civilla. So I suppose the Shishkin farm from Aintree got a boost because that ran quite well yeah. to be second. Uh, first flow was nine years old. He's 14 to 1 for the Champion Chase. But he's 10 in a few weeks, so I can't see him win the Champion Chase. On to Punchestown on Sunday. We mentioned um, we'll start with uh, the John Durkin Memorial, Alaho. I'm actually disgusted that Asteria and Prolange didn't go on and win the race. And I'll tell you why. Because I've backed Alaho already for the Ryanair, but if Asteria and Prolange had won, I think Alaho would be out to like three or four to one shot. And because Asteria and Prolange fell three out, uh, he's two to one now and fights two in places. But that. What's your. What, what, like to me watching the race now, uh, I thought. Now I did. Tip it and nap at Syria for launch, so I was sick. So obviously this is pocket talk, but like I thought he was going to win possibly by double. I thought he was the only horse that was running away at the time. He was loving it. Yeah, but you can't say that, Dave. No, I'm, I'm guessing. Obviously. I know, I'm I know, guessing, I, know. I know. But you can't say he was going to win. You just said he was going to win by double digits. I thought he but might. Like, we all said Oscar Elite was going to win at the third last, and that probably wouldn't have. But I would agree that it would have won. How far we don't know. Okay. Um, so I'm kind so of you're disagreeing. With you. No, but I'm just saying you can't me. say he would have won by ten lengths now. Well, I just did. You can't. <laughs> I'm not letting you. <laughs> so what, where are we with bloody Asterion Falange? Like Asterion Falange is Asterion Falange. It was just the most Asterion Falange thing in the world yeah. to do. Um, to me, now this is obviously a massive if. Like it's it's so <laughs> frustrating. But but if he does run on the King George, yeah. which like you'd imagine, what does he have to lose? I say just, will, just yeah. run a minute. Like yeah. he has to go right handed. Yeah. It's he has to go right handed, yeah. and it is the biggest race right handed in Ireland. The ring, it's yeah. the biggest race it right is, handed. Yeah. So it's the King George. It's prestigious. Willie has won it before, obviously with Florida Pearl. I think if he does run in it, and if this is an even bigger if, if he does not do an Assyrian for launch, a clatter one and come down, I think he's the most likely winner. I actually spoke about him last year for the King George. Do you remember on this show? You did. At do you know what you did? <laughs> I did. You did because, and, and do you know what we were doing the double. It was. A steering for launch for the King George, and right. what was it? And Come it was on. Brave Man's game for the for Brave what? Man's game for the Court of Star and Chase. All right, I think that was our double. Oh, very good. Uh, a steering for launch has had six ha runs to the right, uh, two falls, one on seat, two wins, and I think uh, a third in various. So he has to go right handed, but just he he has to stop getting in his oh, own he's way. He's a headbanger, yeah. But uh, loads loads of ability. Alaho, I wasn't sure. I mentioned him here last week, but then when I was thinking about it later in the week, his first time out record wasn't brilliant. He was beaten 33 lengths, I said it properly, in this race last year. Yeah. And um, he's gone and won it. I just hope he didn't have too hard a race, because it was a bit of a grueler, to be honest. Yeah, and he jumped like, out to his left, so he's going to be definitely better going the other way around. Yeah. And he, he's the most likely winner of the Ryanair. I just wish he was 3-1. to one. I, I said in my piece, I don't know if you read it, do you read my stuff? Sometimes, yeah. I said he did it on a cold, rainy night in Stoke. That was him winning ugly, I thought. Well, that was your headline. I read yeah. that one, yeah. Very it's good, good. wasn't it? Yeah. I came up with that myself now. And uh, did somebody say, Chris Cook said, he had the race in his grasp. <laughs> oh, that was the best headline yeah, ever. That was good, yeah. I thought you were rubbing it in because he won reporter of the year. No, no, no. This is probably but why he won reporter of the year. What a headline. He had, he had the race at his mercy or whatever, but not for long. Yeah, Asterian had, had the race in, in his, his grasp, grasp, but not for long. Very good. Glorious. Well Pretty done, good. Chris. Very good. And well done, Lee, on your awards to you, yeah. <laughs> uh, on to Fernie Hollow. Um, like, I think we're probably getting a bit fussy about horses, first of over fences. People were giving out with Bob Ollinger, who I thought was decent in, um, in Goran. And I'd say the same about Fernie Hollow. Marks out of 10? I'd definitely give him at least an 8. Uh, he was a bit slow at the second. And the one down the hill away from the stands, I think it's the fifth fence, the one before the ditch. He was awkward at it. He, he, he kind of smashed his way through it. Then he was good over the ditch. Then they had three down the back that were dulled off. But from the fourth in, fourth last in, um, to me, he was... And I'll tell very, you something, you know what people are going to crab, right? They're going to say, Cur Sublime is a disappointing corner, right? But what people forget is, Cur Sublime is dynamite fresh. He's dynamite. He almost won the Morgiana. He won first time out a couple of years ago at Down Royal. 
fresh first time out Cur sublime is a different animal altogether to the Cur sublime for the rest of the season. Okay. So that form is not bad at all, I think. Yeah, well, Cur sublime was a 150 rated hurdler, so... And the Devil's Coachman was third. Yeah, he ran a lovely race now. Lovely race. He was a... You'll back him the next day. Will you, Gavin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll win the next day. Just a quick word about Mark Walsh, Glen Quinn Castle, the 17 in a row. And what I'd say about Mark Walsh is, he was brilliant, say, three years ago. Last year, I thought... Maybe he wasn't as good, but at the last few months, he's been excellent. He has been excellent. To me, he's been right back to his best. And I think this horse has helped him because, because he's such a funny animal that has to be delivered very late. Like, if you go watch Mark Walsh win on him in Galway, it was one of the rides of the season. Uh, so it's great to see him back to his best, Mark Walsh. I'd say he was actually sick, the horse fell at the last, because he probably wanted a bit company for longer, yeah? Yeah, sure, he might keep winning. Yeah. Hopefully he does. He's an ATM machine for everybody that keeps backing him. Uh, Fernie Hollow is now 4-1 to one for the Archon, so just to go back to that. And you put him up last week at? Uh, tens, I think. Uh, in the bumper, two Sandor. Ago, sorry, I should say two weeks. Ago. Sandor Clegan. I hope it's spelled, uh, pronounced that right. A four-year-old won the bumper very, very easily. He won by fifteen lengths. I just found it a bit strange why Barry O'Neill, the jockey, hit him five times in the last four and a half when he's gone so far clear. But any of that. You're getting very picky. No, that annoys me when jockeys do that. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You'd be dying uh, for Paul though after last week. Obviously. Absolutely. So we had two omissions from last week's yes. show. Yeah. And uh, hands up, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hands up. We got it wrong. One was that we should have mentioned latest yeah. exhibition. And that's and my was... fault. I do the running order. I should have mentioned latest exhibition. Yeah. Uh, so that was very, who, very like, sad. And to read the quotes, Paul Nolan was saying how much he did for his career. And then for him to say that Brian Cooper, Cooper might need yeah. me riding only. Yeah. And like Brian Cooper is one of the best jockeys in Ireland. Yeah, he's he's fantastic yeah, and riding yeah. brilliant. So it was very, very, very sad. And we we seen the pictures on the TV at the time. So, uh, But the great and thing the is that... the other one was a disgrace. The other we'll come back to that in a sec. But Sandor Clegan, uh, virtually the same owners, I think, as latest exhibition. So it's great for them to... Yeah. It shows the ups and downs of national Most racing. famous horse in the, in the red and white colours was? I'll give you a clue. It sounds like the favourite for the Supreme. John Call. John Call, very good. Uh, anyway, Sandor Clegan, 16 home to champion bumper. Don't know if he'll go there. Uh, and the other omission that we had, when we were mentioning our top five yeah, mares ever. It's quite embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. A couple of people mentioned Sorry, YouTube. Eddie. Sorry, Michael. Sorry, Noel. Sorry, Valerie. Sorry, Gordon. We uh, never mentioned Apple's Jade, which she has to be there. Ah, that was ridiculous. She was, How yeah. did we forget her? Don't know. I got see. I kind of half copied you. I think, <laughs> and you didn't mention her. So, um, we're going to finish now in Cork on Sunday. Largy debut four or five twenty beat. Uh, that was the time beat Kilcrook by ten lengths. Largy debut was sixteens uh, for the Supreme. Kilcrook is only tens. You'd wonder if Kilcrook will step up and trip, but that's not the real Kilcrook. He's better than that. Is he? Ah, yeah, he's better than that. What excuse are you affording him here now? I don't know, sure. How do we know how fit he was? Or he jumped quite well. He made a mistake how three do we out. How do know how fit he was? He was back from one to six into one yeah, to one fourteen. fourteen. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't. I know. I, I, I'm, something not, might show I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, something yeah, might show up. Um, but a laggy debut made, made a mistake two out, but he was still very, very good. Here's the question for you: If Kilcrot had done what Largy debuted, did, yeah. what price would he be? He'd be favoured for the sprint. <laughs> He'd be another three or four to one shot. Yeah, mad. Yeah. Uh, Dice Art Dynamo was excellent in the other uh, division of the Maiden Hurdle. It beat Lucky Tenor, who's rated 116 by 19 lengths. Uh, it was two from two, and bumpers had been keen. It's a horse I liked. We mentioned at the start of the season. Yeah, you spotted him quite early. Uh, just he, he was very keen to punch down winning the second bumper. This time he was less keen. The hurdles tend to settle down horses. Maybe you need a hurdle to calm you down a bit. I thought I'm actually doing well this week. <laughs> I don't think I've got overly excited at all. He's, he's 10 to 1 for the Supreme, 12 to 1 for the Ballymore. Don't back him for both races because then you're backing the horse at like 5 to 1. So don't be doing that. You hate that, don't you? Yeah, you can't do that. Um, but he was very good. He was a second slower than Largy Debu, so they're both quite good. Concertista is now 3 to 1 favourite for the Mayor's Chase. It was her first time over fences. Uh, she beat Jeremy's Flame by a half length. This was um, a grade two. It was 4.16. The time was quite good. It was actually roughly the same as Anna Green's time. She's far too short for Jeremy. To me, she is, yeah. Far too short. Yeah. Ridiculous price. Um, her jumping. She made five mistakes, I counted, during the round. Did you? Yeah. Small ones, nothing major. See, you're Just getting picky little... in your old age. <laughs> you're, getting, you're not letting but anything away look with it, much. It was her first time over fences. It was a very good run to, in a grade two to beat Jeremy's Flame and also Magic Days who was the front runner. It was a very good performance, but her jumping would just need to brush up a little bit. But uh, she's decent. Energamine. I'm interested now in this. I'm, I'm very interested to know what you thought of Energamine. There's been contrasting, it's con contrasting opinions on social media okay. all week. Well, uh, what I want to do is I want to talk to you quickly about times. You can talk to me all you want so about times, guys. So uh was taken on, as we know, by um, Notebook yes. for the first mile and a half. They went a mental gallop. I timed it that when they got to the, you know, the fourth last, the one before the turn in. I do. Uh, Energamine was 24 lengths ahead of Concertista at that stage. But in the end, they actually finished with a very, very similar time. So they made it up. But 
they'd gone too quick. Uh, the thing I liked about Enrico Mean is that he was taken on, even in his jumping, he didn't flinch. His jumping stayed good mm. with a horse beside him. And Notebook is a good jumper, obviously, as well. Yeah, but uh, you can tell they went too quick because Notebook ended up being beaten, I think, 42 lengths in the end. Mm. So Enrico Mean was very good. He's 5-2 to two for the champion chase. Shishkin is 6-4, to four, which we haven't seen yet this season. So, so has Enrico Mean enhanced his reputation? Has he... Hampered his reputation, or is he just the same as you top beforehand? Well, he was five to one a week ago, and now he's five to two, so he's enhanced it, yeah. Oh yeah, good, good, good point, yeah. Um, good point, well made. And I suppose Shaq and Persuade are disappointed, but yeah, it's at the moment you'd have Enagamini and Shishkin well ahead of the rest. Have you more times? No, me? just a couple of things. Constitution Hill we mentioned, uh, it beat naturally high his time, I think by six, sorry, seven and a half seconds, he's and deadly, isn't he? Sam Reeve by six and a half. Oh, he's deadly. A lot of that was early on, but even after the last. Uh, it was two seconds quicker, which is uh, eight lengths than Sam Reeve. So that was quite good. It's deadly, isn't he? Yeah, he's good. Uh, Edward Stone had actually a quicker time than Grenatine, believe yes. it or not. Uh, now, a lot of that was made. Um, what I did, I timed it from the last fence plus a circuit. And uh, it beat it by three and a half seconds. But by the time they jumped the last fence with a circuit to go, the gap was already three and a half seconds. So from then on, they actually had a very similar time. Uh, Fernie Hollow against Alaho. Are you ready for one? Okay, yeah, this this, uh, this intrigues me now because I don't know. I like when you start talking when I don't know what you're going to say. Okay. So I don't know what you're going to say. <clears throat> so Alaho did an extra half a mile. They probably went a bit quicker. But from I timed it various places. But from the last fence plus a circuit, the two of them did it four minutes and one second. So from the last fence around to the line, the exact same in the two races. But from the third last fence uh, to the line, Fernie Hollow did it in 28 lengths quicker time than Alaho. Why was that? I do mean, why is that? Like, why, why do you think that? No, I know. Seven seconds. I know. But four lengths is no, 28. No, I know, but why do you think that happened? Um, Just pure ability or the way the race was run? Or? Yeah, I think that they went too quick in the in the, in the, the Ryanair Society. John Durkin. In the John Durkin. Mm. Uh, but they were still, legless, weren't they? Yeah, I think Fernie Hall, they went slow enough early on and they quickened. But I'm just saying to you that Fernie Hall's performance from the fourth, last, third, last onwards was really good in my opinion. 28 lengths. I think he's a horse full of gears. I think he's perfect for the Arkle. Um, oh, hopefully. I, I wonder why you're saying that. You hardly backed <laughs> but, him for the Arkle and don't want him to go for the march, did you? Um, no. <laughs> but he, he was very, very fast from three or four out, yeah. Okay. And his jumping got better near the end as well. Uh, Concertista and Energamine, as we said, uh, had the same time overall, but uh, Energamine was 24 lengths ahead, the fourth last. And then finally, Largy Debu, Dice Art Dynamo, and Lucky Max. Basically, the two winners, Largy Debu and Dice Art Dynamo, had literally the same time all the way around. Um, and they finished uh, three or four seconds ahead of Lucky Max, but he was quite quick from two out. He's a horse that could win again, Lucky Max. Lucky Max. And that's it. That is, that, Gavin, I have to say you played a blinder there now. That was very informative and uh, I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of work. That was the week that was. The week that was. So each week here on Up and Yanti, we preview one of the greater races at the Cheltenham Festival. And we're on to week five, so that means it's the turn of the three mile sixer. It is the National Hunt Chase, and at the moment with Bet365, Run Wild Fred is your 5-1 to favourite. It's 10-1 to one each of three. Vanillier, Statler, and Ahoy Senor, it's 12-1 to one my previous selection from Up in the Ante. The boss is Oscar, and it's 14-1 to one bar. 5-1 to one Run Wild Fred, Gavin. I actually think this is maybe a point or two bigger than each other. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very fair price. Um, second in the Thiesti, second in the Irish Grand National, over 3-5, so you know he stays. Goes on soft ground, because obviously if you're second in the Thiesti's, you have to go on soft ground. Um, he then uh, came out and won the Tritown off 145. He beat a far club by 7.5 lengths. He's up to 159. Jump stays, what more do you want, yeah? What right more favorite. do you want, yeah? Right yeah. favourite, most likely winner. Yeah, he's got a good chance. Uh, the one that I'd be most afraid of, if I backed him, would be Vanillier. Very impressive in the Bart at last year, won it by 11 lengths. Uh, hammered Statler. Now, Statler turned the tables and punched down mm. uh, to finish ahead of him behind um, Willie's horse. Galloping the, the Champs. But um, I think the Vanillier just didn't get a good ride that day. It didn't get out in front and I think that race didn't suit it. So I think Vanillier has got a great chance. Do you think he'll go here or maybe the Brown Advisory? Uh, the Brown Advisory, you kind of say Brave Man's Game, Ahoy Senor and Galloping the Champs. I'd say it'll probably go here. Yeah. I'd say maybe it'll run the three mile or leps on Christmas. If it gets beat, maybe it'll go here. Yeah, that'll be the acid test, I'd say. Yeah. A high senior won't go here, I don't Too think. Too good, Lucinda. Yeah. Don't give it any second thought. Yeah. Doesn't run here. Then you've got your pal, the boss's Oscar. All right, Gavin. It's been a tough week, right? <laughs> you know, my selections and up in the ante have gone a bit pear shaped. I didn't win two awards at the HWPAs. So can you give me any bit of enthusiasm for the not, boss's Oscar? Not Come really, on. Not really, no. Uh, he's not from three over fences. His jumping is just a bit iffy. 
He's rated 143. He's 16 pounds behind uh, Run Wild Fred at the minute. That's a lot. Nothing? Anything? Throw uh, me a bone here? No, he's only won, won out of his last 10, so not particularly. Uh, Fruit de Lenn is in the betting, but might go there because Run Wild Fred, same as Beacon Edge. On the ropes, Fruit slow Delaine, the last day. If I, do you know where I go with him? Where is that? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Bottomless ground, right three handed. miles, right handed, mm. boom. Uh, gentleman's game is in the betting. Uh, three under through five is interesting because if Brave Man's game went for the Brown Advisory, perhaps Paul Nichols might send him here. here. Uh, Capadano uh, won a handicap and punched down off 132, is now 147. If that goes over fences, that might have a chance. But for me, the two that stand out would be Vanillier and Run Wild Fred. Yeah, I think Run Wild Fred, if I, if I had my time back again, Gavin, that day I tipped the Boss Oscar, I would have tipped Run Wild Fred. I think 5 to 1 is more than fair. Okay. That was the National Hunt Chase preview. So, folks, what's happening this week? It's a bumper weekend of action. It's just bang, bang, yep. bang, bang, bang. Great. Love this meeting at Cheltenham. And, of course, the Race and Post sponsors, the Race and Post Gold Cup on Perfect. Saturday. Yep. One of my favourite races of the year. And it's going to be a cracker this year, Gavin. It is going to be a cracker. Race and Post Gold Cup. Uh, I like one. Do you? Yes, I like one. This. Go on. It's an old buddy of mine. And I just I just think it's quite clever by Venetia Williams to have kept Seapage fresh for this. Because I think he goes well fresh. If you remember a couple of years ago, he tried to give Riders on the Storm £7 at Aintree first time out. And almost did a travel as well as him. Riders on the Storm went on to win a grade one that season. And to me, that was a hell of a performance. He's won over the course and distance off 154. He's only £3 higher now off 157. Venetia's horses, as we know from last week, are coming right back into form. She had three winners. She's had like three winners, maybe a couple of seconds, a couple of thirds in the last fortnight. They're running well. We saw that at Huntington on Sunday as well. And uh, to me, Seapage, this race has been in my head for Seapage. He was disappointed in the race last year. But if you go back and just watch his run in the Ultima at Cheltenham last year, it was remarkable how he finished fourth. Remarkable. It was like Big Rivers finished in the race a few years ago. Remarkable finish. Just think, now the Phoenicia's horse are in form. I think Seapage, 16 to 1, Battery 6 5. Okay, Massive 16 chance. to 1, good. I'd be against Layla, he's 9. I just don't see why he'll turn it around necessarily. I like Midnight Shadow for a small bet. Uh, he was second in the race last year. He uh, won the Paddy Power of 147. It was up to 154, <clears throat> 7 pound higher. But I think if Cool Cody had stayed in his feet, it would have suited him. And also, he made a dreadful mistake at the last. So yes. I thought he was much the best horse. Yeah. So like he looked like he was going to win by a mile at the last. Yeah, so the yeah. mistake knocked. The stuffing out of him a little bit. What did he go up for winning? Seven Midnight Shadow? Seven, okay. Yeah, I just thought. So Midnight Shadow uh, for you? Seed yeah, pads so, for me? And I think the new track won't be any difference to him. It should be okay. Okay, okay. So we've got, uh, that's the that's the race and post Gold Cup. Going to be a cracker on Saturday. Sea Page and Midnight Shadow are your two tips. Uh, now the Albert Bartlett novices hurdle is interesting. Yeah, I like Blazing Cal. Uh, I think the price is very fair, 11 to 8. Uh, Gilino Bello that I beat the last day, 7 to 4. It's 11 to 2 bar. I'd like Blazing Cal. Yeah, I'd like Blazing Cal. I thought I thought he did well to win. Didn't jump as well as some of the others. At yeah, the but November I think meeting. this new course would suit him better because yeah, there's only two run. in the last. Yeah, seven. I think he's got a big engine, Blazing Cal. Yeah. Now, Gavin, it's uh, countdown to Christmas. A big offering from the Racing Post. What a prize we have in store here! A deluxe trip for two. Can you say a deluxe? Could a trip be deluxe? What's the actual definition of deluxe? Don't know. Just like. Flamboyant yeah. and fancy. And Deluxe so fine. anyway, trip to, for two to Gold Cup with a fancy meal, an overnight stay, all you want. And how to enter, Gavin, they need to have a bet on Friday. So you need okay. to find them a winner right. on Friday. Bet okay. you the racing post on Friday. And what are they going to back on Friday? Uh, I like two hearts at the minute. One is Sporting John. He's only two to one, but I think that's fair enough. Okay. Uh, he's running a handicap hurdle of 151. He won the last day of 146. I find it gas that in England... Gas, great word. They, they seem to get less penalties than we do in Ireland. Uh, if that horse won in Ireland the last day, he would have got eight pound. Yeah. Uh, but he only got five pound for winning the last day, so he he could win again. No, like Ireland have a terrible record at Cheltenham as well. I don't know what's going no, on. No, but I just mean that when a horse wins a handicap in Ireland, they just get put up more. Nothing to do with Cheltenham. It's just a, a thing that I notice. Um, there's also the cross country handicap chase on Friday. A horse I like at five to one. He's running here off one forty. Uh, hopefully carrying ten stone five. Midnight Maestro. He only been over cross country fences once behind Shady Operator, mm. his stable companion there a number of weeks ago. So on Friday, I'd like Midnight Maestro. So Midnight Maestro for Gavin, that's your strongest fancy on Friday? Yeah, and, and Sporting John. And on Saturday, it'll be interesting. I doubt we'll see Bob Ollinger against my Drogo. Maybe we will. Imagine. Whoa. Yeah, it'd be great if we did. Uh, Night Salute is another one to keep in mind on Saturday in the Juvenile Hurdle. Yes, love him. Uh, wears headgear usually, travels very strong, won quite well the last day. So. It's a bit strange that there's only um, one meeting in Ireland this weekend. And between today and Christmas Day, we've only got five National Hunt meetings, which I think is a bit crazy. Yeah. It's December. It's generally 
when you get national hunt ground December and January, there should be more meetings. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. It's all bang, bang, bang at Christmas. Yeah. I just have to wait until then. So that's what's happening that's this week. And there are... So you have two for Friday. Yeah. And then, obviously, the Racing Post Gold Cup on Saturday. So and Blazing Cal on Saturday. Blazing Cal on Saturday as well. So that's what's happening this week, folks. Yes, it's upping the stakes time here on Up in the Ante. And Gavin, we've... Like, it's a new segment. There was a bit of pressure. We had to make a fast start. And every week... One of us has got one of them up. Yeah. No, so it's we, been great. And one we, week we got the double up. Yeah, we've made money every week for the charity. Lost event. him out 7-1 to one for Cancer Trials Ireland. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Uh, we have a new cameraman, Lawrence, and I see him out there with a pen and paper now every week. Yeah, so he's ready to scrum then, to, yeah. Um, so this week I'll go for Blazing Cal, 11-8. to eight. I think there's a dot of 6-4 to four about, but 11-8 to eight to win the Albert Barton Novice Hurdle on Saturday. Okay, yeah, I have to agree with that. I think that's a great show. And you, so you're going, you're going for the safe one, you know, because we need to get money in the bank. <laughs> I'm going to go for the, the extravagant one. I'm going to go for c at 16 well to 1 in the Racing Post Gold Cup. I just think soft ground, hopefully there'll be plenty of rain this week, which I think there is. And I think c is going to finally win one of that uh, the December race at Cheltenham, the Racing Post Gold Cup. So c 16 to 1 for the Racing Post Gold Cup and Gavin is Blazing Cal in the Albert Bartlett Novice Hurdle they're both on Saturday yes it's time for some more anti-post picks for the 2022 Cheltenham Festival and Gavin look it's been a rough week let's just <laughs> call it a rough week with my tips right obviously Burning Victory Mai Tai and Shaq and Persua. Yeah. one disaster after another right so I, I, I'm not going to change my policy, okay? okay. I'm going to go. I got the captain in last week, Jacques Bertrand. The captain is like Stephen Gerrard when he was captain in odd time. He'd get he, sent off. He slipped yeah, against Chelsea. Yeah, he got slipped and he got sent off. Okay, So the captain has let the side down. Okay, yes, yeah. So the captain now needs to just... The captain, if you're listening, you need to get your arse in gear, right? <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to go for another big price one. Okay, okay? come on. I, I just think the last few weeks, surprisingly... Like, if we were here three weeks ago and we're going through... It was like, Willie, Willie, Willie. We thought Willie was going to win everything with his with his novices and then Nicky Henderson all of a sudden yeah. comes out and he's got Constitution Hill and he's got John Bond yeah. and you're going whoa and I want to get in on this kind of Nicky okay, theme Nicky theme yeah so I spoke about it a few weeks ago when I was in Seven Barrows which I was when I was in Seven Barrows I saw Botwell Bridge schooling okay, okay. so Botwell Bridge ran at Sandown on Friday jumped like an old hand was brilliant right he jumped absolutely brilliant so I saw with my own two eyes Although they are helped by contact lenses, might I add. I saw Bothwell Bridge schooling alongside Dusart. Okay. And I have to say, Dusart blew me away with really? how slick and how natural and how quick he was, okay? Now, he was supposed to run a Kempton a few weeks ago, but the ground was too quick. We haven't seen him since. But there's a few kind of novice chases coming up that I think he will run in. And I just, I, I just, I would be tearing my hair out if Dusart came out and won impressively and was 8-1 to one for the Arkham. Yeah, he could. So, He's, 25 He's a fine big one. horse too, isn't he? He is a fine big yeah. horse, a fine stamp for horse. He's 25 to 1 Betri 65 for the Arkle. Okay? 25 to 1. 25 to 1, stand out with Betri 65 for the Arkle. And to me, I just have to get in on it. I seen him, like he won, when he won his, his maiden hurdle at Newbury, he beat Soaring Glory. Strong form, Soaring Glory obviously yes. came out and won the Betfair hurdle, okay? Yeah. So strong form, Soaring Glory is 150, 150 hurdler, okay? Then he was third. He missed most of the season. Missed 155 days. Then he came out and he was third in the grade one at the entry festival. He third time lucky behind him. I'd say the lack of a recent run just didn't mm. help him there, okay? Yeah. I just think he's a natural chaser. Well related. And uh, I think he's... I just think he's a good horse. It's a guess. Of course it's a guess. He hasn't achieved as much as Fernie Hollow. Who knows what Appreciate is going to do. I just think... He's 25 to 1 now. I think if he wins first time out, I think he'd be eight. Yeah, I think it's a decent shout. I was very close to tipping him up exactly this time last year for the Supreme yeah. because it was a brilliant performance in Newbury. So. And uh, to help your case as well, I think he's a half-brother to Simon Sig. He so. is a half-brother to Simon so, Sig. Good go, shout, yeah. yeah. Different uh, colour all, all the same, but uh, he is a half-brother to Simon Sig. So my latest tip for the 2022 Cheltenham Festival is do start at 25 to 1 Bet365. Your turn. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to pick a horse for the Albert Bartlett. Now, I had a lovely grand plan. My grand plan was that I was going to wait until after the 2 mile 7 novice hurdle in Limerick on the 28th of December it's usually ran on because whatever wins that generally, it's the best point of the Albert Bartlett every year. So I was going to wait because you have hollow games, him or Ginto might go there. You have uh, What Do You Want, Journey With Me, perhaps he's a horse to keep an eye on too. But because he's entered this weekend, I'm going to tip up Blazing Cal for the, for the Albert Bartlett. You're as doing I said, Blazing Cal this week. Yeah. I wanted to wait, but I, I've no choice now because um, he's 16 to 1, a standout price with Bet365. I love the fact that he's only a five year old. 
Uh, he ran in five bumpers as a four-year-old, but he's a fine big horse, and he's, he is, yeah. I'd say bumpers just wasn't his cup of tea. Uh, he beat uh, Gringo de Brel, uh easily down in Galway over two mile three. He's come out and since and beat adamantly yeah, chosen. That so that's been franked, yeah. Now the horse that were third, fourth, and fifth in that uh, maiden hurdle didn't really frank it since either. But anyway, Gringo de Brel did. Uh, last month he went to Chatham and beat uh, Gelino Bello by two and a half lengths on the old course. And that was over two mile five. As I said, he's kind of a big awkward fella, but his jumping was, he clattered one or two. And, he did, yeah. Uh, but in the end, I thought he was the best horse. He ran around a bit, he banged into Gelino Bello at the last. I think he's a good horse. I think he's got a big engine. Charles says, in one of his quotes afterwards, was that uh, if he gets into a battle, he loves a battle, that he's an honest horse, which is good. Now, usually I would ask you to do a Charles impression here, but a few people are saying it's turned into an impression <laughs> show. So um, I'm going to stick to the script. The, uh, the race this Saturday, it's over the, the course and distance of the Bartlett. It's on the new course. It's three miles. It's the exact same distance. Um, I think he'll beat Gilino Bello again. Uh, Charles knows what it takes to win the race. Uh, he won a weapons amnesty. He went on to win the RSA. That's right. And also he did Solwith, which was a brilliant three-mile hurdler. So uh, he knows his onions. Um, I wasn't expecting him up this soon because I wanted to wait to Limerick, but now I can't because he's entered. So anyway, uh, Blazing Cal, 16 to 1. I think it's decent value. In a very, very open race, there's lots of good horses in the Bartlett, but I think this lad could be very good. Okay, so this, <laughs> you're, you're putting a lot of faith. It, it, it's going to be either a brilliant day for you on Saturday or a disaster because if he's beaten he'll obviously be a bigger prize and you're up in the stakes is gone but if he wins yeah I think he'll, I don't see why he won't beat Gelino Bello again I think he will I think he'll stay uh, the ground the last day was good uh, Charles has said that he wants softer ground this weekend there's a lot of rain coming today I think in England the ground should be softer um, so I think he's a good horse great pick great pick Gavin well done so there you go Gavin is putting all his eggs into the Blazing Cal ba basket. So 16 to 1 Blazing Cal with Bet365 for the Albert Barton. So two big price fancies this week. 25 to 1 and 16 to 1 for the 2022 Cheltenham Festival. So before we go, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, we have to have a look at our anti-post list so far. I really wanted to scrap this, but apparently people want to know how we're getting on each week. And we have to have a look at our anti-post list. So Gavin, you go first. Take as much time as you need because I don't need much time on mine. Uh, they've done okay. Uh, Phil Dore, Fernie Hollow. Buzz, Gallop and Champ and American Mike. All shorter. A little bit, yeah. All, well, Fernie Hollow, 10 to 1. Yeah. Now? Uh, 4 to 1 with them, I think. With Betsy American Mike? Uh, American Mike, 11 to 2. I don't know, is it 7 to 2 or something? It, I, that'll be run in the next week or two, hopefully in the winner's uh, bumper in Navan. So yes. that'll, that'll tell us more how good he is. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it's great selections over, I have to say. That. And then in uh, Saturday week, I think two of our selections are going to run against each other, Buzz and Time Hill and the Long Walk. So. God, I'm going to need that one. Um, I'm going to need to win that one, Gavin. You're going to have to give me that one, I think. Time Hill against Buzz. It'll be interesting what the ground run. is that day, but that'll be a good race. That will be a good race. Yeah, yeah. And we'll have a quick look at my selections now. Burning victory. Disaster. No. What do you make of that? Asher, she's not a hurdler, really, is she? Her jumping is not good enough, and she was well beat, so. Yeah. Uh, Shaq and Bersois, the captain. Obviously not Shaq and Bersois. He's better than that. I don't, like, of course he's better than yeah, that. Yeah, he's better than that. And don't, like, like I'd but, love it, as Kevin Keegan would say, I would love it. I'd love it if Willie got him back for the champion chase. Yeah, I can't see it. Okay, that's okay. That's okay, Gavin. <laughs> Just... Most viewers can't either. And my tie was beaten by the machine that is Constitution Hill. So, what's well, a great week, Gavin? No. Hopefully, anyway, sure. It look, will improve. It's a long way from now to Cheltenham. It is anti-post betting. She'll come up with a couple of twenty-one winners, and then you'll be a hero. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think I was. I was. I was nearly going to pluck Pony Suckle this week, Gavin herself. <laughs> so I was. But there you go. That's a look at our anti-post list for the twenty twenty-two Cheltenham Festival. That's it. That's it for episode 5 of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365. What's in store for Gavin Lynch this week? Ash, we have two days, uh, Cheltenham Friday, Saturday, no Irish racing on Sunday, which is Gavin, just I was on a about scandal. your personal life. What's the ah. with racing? What are you going to do this week? Them. I haven't planned any little romantic trips. You're bringing the kids anywhere, Nothing making major, dinner no. any night. They're actually off school today with what a star. What are you watching at the minute? Uh, on Netflix? Yeah. Uh, Succession. Oh, what's that like? Yeah, so. Yeah, it's very good, yeah. And uh, might bring the kids to the cinema. There's a what do you call them? Is in a movie about the uh, the two the two tennis players. What do you call the? Uh, Serena Venus. Williams. Yeah, 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 Venus, yeah, yeah. You might bring them to see that. Will Smith is in it. There you go. I might see them bring that. So oh, you're good bring them to see that. You? Oh, yeah. That's and, it. Uh, good racing at the weekend. Yeah, Cheltenham Friday, Saturday. No Irish racing. We said Sunday, uh, National Hunt. Uh, we ferry house on Saturday. And maybe you might even see appreciate it. We might see appreciate it. Hopefully he might run in the beginner's chase. Uh, so there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget, it's a big weekend. If you're going to gamble, gamble responsibly. Only bet what you can afford to lose. I've been David Jennings. He's been Gavin Lynch. And thanks for watching.